Good day, students. Welcome to this lecture on human anatomy, the scientific study of the structures of the human body and how they interact to sustain life. Human anatomy forms the cornerstone of medical education and is essential for understanding physiology, pathology, and clinical medicine. In today's session, we will explore the structure and function of cells, tissues, organs, and entire systems, and examine how diseases impact these structures and their interactions. The human body is an intricate biological machine composed of various components working in harmony. At its most basic level, the body is organized into atoms and molecules, forming cells, which group into tissues, which then build organs, and finally, organ systems. Each level of organization plays a critical role in maintaining homeostasis, the state of internal balance required for health. We will explore these systems in detail and examine how they function both independently and collectively. Cells are the fundamental units of life. Every anatomical and physiological function begins at the cellular level. There are over 200 different types of cells in the human body, each specialized for specific tasks, such as muscle contraction, nerve conduction, or oxygen transport. Cells combine to form tissues. There are four primary tissue types, epithelial, connective, muscle, and nervous tissue. Each type has unique structural and functional characteristics that contribute to the organs and systems they form. The human body comprises 11 major organ systems, each with specialized structures and coordinated functions. These systems include the integumentary, skeletal, muscular, nervous, endocrine, cardiovascular, lymphatic, respiratory, digestive, urinary, and reproductive systems. Though we study them separately for clarity, they are deeply interconnected. For example, the muscular system works with the skeletal system for movement, while the nervous and endocrine systems collaborate to regulate body processes. The integumentary system includes the skin, hair, nails, and various glands. It serves as the body's first line of defense against environmental threats, regulates temperature, and enables sensation. The skin is the largest organ of the human body and is composed of three main layers, the epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis. Body membranes, including mucus, serous, and synovial membranes, line body cavities and secrete fluids that lubricate and protect internal structures. The skeletal system is composed of 206 bones, connected by joints and supported by cartilage and ligaments. It provides structure, supports movement, protects internal organs, stores minerals, and houses bone marrow for blood cell production. Bones are dynamic tissues capable of growth, repair, and remodeling. Conditions such as osteoporosis and arthritis can significantly impact skeletal integrity and function. The muscular system enables movement, posture maintenance, and heat production. It includes three types of muscles, skeletal, cardiac, and smooth. Skeletal muscles are voluntary and attached to bones. Cardiac muscle is found only in the heart and functions involuntarily. Smooth muscles line organs and vessels and also function without conscious control. The interaction between muscles and bones is crucial for locomotion and daily activities. The nervous system is the body's fast-acting control system. It is divided into the central nervous system, comprising the brain and spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system, which includes all other nerves. It is responsible for sensory perception, decision-making, and initiating bodily responses. Through receptors and affectors, the nervous system detects changes in the internal and external environment and coordinates an appropriate reaction. Closely linked to the nervous system are the special senses, vision, hearing, taste, smell, and touch. These senses rely on highly specialized receptors and neural pathways to transmit information to the brain for interpretation. Impairments in the nervous system can result in disorders such as paralysis, seizures, or sensory loss. The endocrine system complements the nervous system by providing slower but longer-lasting control. It consists of glands such as the pituitary, thyroid, adrenal, and pancreas, which release hormones into the bloodstream. Hormones regulate growth, metabolism, reproduction, 
and many other vital functions. For example, insulin from the pancreas regulates blood glucose, while thyroid hormones control metabolic rate. Hormonal imbalances can lead to conditions like diabetes, hypothyroidism, or infertility. The circulatory system consists of the heart, blood vessels, and blood. The heart is a muscular organ that pumps oxygenated and deoxygenated blood throughout the body. Blood vessels, including arteries, veins, and capillaries, transport blood to and from tissues. Blood is composed of red cells, white cells, platelets, and plasma, each with specific functions such as oxygen transport, immunity, and clotting. This system is critical for maintaining oxygen and nutrient delivery, waste removal, and temperature regulation. Diseases such as hypertension, atherosclerosis, and anemia can severely impact circulatory function. The circulatory system consists of the heart, blood vessels, and blood. The heart is a muscular organ that pumps oxygenated and deoxygenated blood throughout the body. Blood vessels, including arteries, veins, and capillaries, transport blood to and from tissues. Blood is composed of red cells, white cells, platelets, and plasma, each with specific functions such as oxygen transport, immunity, and clotting. This system is critical for maintaining oxygen and nutrient delivery, waste removal, and temperature regulation. Diseases such as hypertension, atherosclerosis, and anemia can severely impact circulatory function. The circulatory system consists of the heart, blood vessels, and blood. The heart is a muscular organ that pumps oxygenated and deoxygenated blood throughout the body. Blood vessels, including arteries, veins, and capillaries, transport blood to and from tissues. Blood is composed of red cells, white cells, platelets, and plasma, each with specific functions such as oxygen transport, immunity, and clotting. This system is critical for maintaining oxygen and nutrient delivery, waste removal, and temperature regulation. Diseases such as hypertension, atherosclerosis, and anemia can severely impact circulatory function. The circulatory system consists of the heart, blood vessels, and blood. The heart is a muscular organ that pumps oxygenated and deoxygenated blood throughout the body. Blood vessels, including arteries, veins, and capillaries, transport blood to and from tissues. Blood is composed of red cells, white cells, platelets, and plasma, each with specific functions such as oxygen transport, immunity, and clotting. This system is critical for maintaining oxygen and nutrient delivery, waste removal, and temperature regulation. Diseases such as hypertension, atherosclerosis, and anemia can severely impact circulatory function. The lymphatic system is essential for fluid balance and immune defense. It consists of lymphatic vessels, lymph nodes, and organs like the spleen and thymus. Lymph, a clear fluid, is filtered through lymph nodes, where pathogens are detected and destroyed by immune cells. The system also helps in the absorption of fats from the digestive tract. When compromised, the lymphatic system can lead to conditions such as lymphedema or impaired immunity. The respiratory system ensures the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the body and the environment. It includes the nose, pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, and lungs. Gas exchange occurs in the alveoli of the lungs, where oxygen diffuses into the blood and carbon dioxide is expelled. Breathing is controlled by both neural and chemical mechanisms to match the body's needs. Disorders such as asthma, bronchitis, or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease affect respiratory efficiency and gas exchange. The digestive system breaks down food into absorbable nutrients and eliminates waste. It includes the mouth, esophagus, stomach, intestines, liver, pancreas, and gallbladder. Mechanical and chemical digestion begin in the mouth and continue throughout the gastrointestinal tract. Absorption occurs primarily in the small intestine, while the large intestine handles water reabsorption and waste formation. Nutrition and metabolism are closely linked to digestion. Nutrients provide energy, support cellular function, and contribute to growth. 
Metabolism encompasses all biochemical processes, including catabolism and anabolism. Malnutrition, obesity, and metabolic disorders can arise from dysfunctions in this system. The urinary system maintains fluid and electrolyte balance and removes waste products through urine. It includes the kidneys, ureters, bladder, and urethra. The kidneys filter blood to produce urine while regulating blood pressure, red blood cell production, and pH. Common urinary disorders include kidney stones, urinary tract infections, and chronic kidney disease. The reproductive system is responsible for the production of gametes, fertilization, and the support of fetal development. In females, it includes the ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus, and vagina. In males, it comprises the testes, vas deferens, prostate gland, and penis. Hormones such as estrogen and testosterone play critical roles in reproductive health and secondary sexual characteristics. Disorders of this system may include infertility, menstrual irregularities, or reproductive cancers. Genetics is the study of heredity and variation in living organisms. Human traits are determined by DNA, a molecule that carries genetic information. Each individual inherits half of their genetic material from each parent. Genes influence everything from eye color to susceptibility to disease. Growth and development refer to the physical and functional changes that occur throughout life, from fertilization to old age. This process is regulated by genetic instructions, hormones, nutrition, and environmental factors. Disruptions in genetic coding or developmental pathways may result in congenital anomalies, growth disorders, or inherited conditions such as sickle cell anemia. Diseases, whether infectious, genetic, metabolic, or degenerative, can significantly impair the function of cells, tissues, and organs. For example, diabetes affects the endocrine and urinary systems, hypertension compromises the cardiovascular system, and cancer may impact virtually any tissue. The human body's response to disease often involves inflammation, immune reactions, and attempts at tissue repair. In some cases, these responses are beneficial. In others, they can contribute to further damage. Understanding anatomy helps healthcare professionals locate the source of symptoms, interpret diagnostic results, and plan appropriate treatments. Although we study organ systems separately, the human body functions as an integrated whole. No system operates in isolation. For instance, the muscular and skeletal systems work together to enable movement. The nervous and endocrine systems coordinate control mechanisms. The circulatory system transports hormones, nutrients, and immune cells to various tissues. During physical activity, multiple systems, respiratory, cardiovascular, muscular, and nervous, interact to meet increased demands. Similarly, during illness, systems may compensate for one another or become collectively compromised. Studying these interactions helps us appreciate the body's complexity and resilience. In conclusion, human anatomy provides the foundational knowledge necessary for all fields of health and life sciences. We have explored the hierarchical structure of the body, from cells and tissues to organs and organ systems. We examine how the systems function independently and in concert, and how disease can affect these interactions. Understanding human anatomy not only deepens our appreciation for the human form but also equips us with the insight to approach health and disease critically and compassionately. I encourage you to continue studying these systems in detail. Use diagrams, models, and lab experiences to reinforce your learning. Remember, a thorough grasp of anatomy is essential for anyone pursuing careers in medicine, nursing, biology, or allied health professions.